Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I hope you all are going to enjoy and I do hope that you're going to enjoy this series. We're going to be delving into indoor gardening and so this series is all going to be about indoor gardening because it's indoor gardening season. So we're out, we're back here uh, with the uh, indoor grow setup and we're going to be setting it up today, getting it ready to grow and we're going to be doing a lot of videos this year about indoor growing. In years past, we've kind of just touched on things, we've had a lot of questions come up that we wanted to answer but didn't quite have time in the schedule for, so I've allotted a ton of time to answer a ton of questions, do a ton of video topics, 100% about indoor gardening, until of course it comes time for seed starting, and then we'll slowly transition into seed starting. So uh, for the next couple months, month and a half, two months or so maybe, maybe even more, who knows, depending on how the weather goes, we're gonna be in here talking about indoor gardening. And it's gonna be a lot of fun because in years past, we've really focused on uh, lettuces and greens. We eat a lot of those here. And it's something that it costs a ton in the store and it's really great when you can get it fresh. But I wanted to try a little bit of a, a different approach this year that we're still going to be growing with an organic method, 100% organic method, but we're going to do things a little bit more interesting. We're going to really push the capabilities of this system here with our lights and trifecta and the growing medium that we're using, which we'll get into. But I really wanted to put them to the test just to see how, uh, how much productivity we can get out of this space. You can grow a lot of food in a small amount of space when you space things properly and use kind of a square foot uh, approach. And we very much adapted on that with high intensity gardening. So we will be high intensity gardening with kind of a square foot approach because I think it's really remarkable how much you can get out of 16 square feet. I think it'll be great to show you all what's possible indoors in 16 square feet. It'll be interesting for myself too. So. Uh, Without further ado, let's get into the soil that we're going to be using in this grow setup, and then we're gonna walk around and grab some seeds. I think, uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's go. So this is what we're gonna be using. This is ProMix. Now, ProMix, we've done a lot of videos on. It is our, our go-to for a potting mix, it is our go-to for a seed starting mix, it is our go-to for indoor gardening, um, and we even did a couple raised beds outside with that. And I just absolutely love ProMix. It, it, it is rather expensive, as I've mentioned in past videos, to use large quantities of this. But if you only have a small amount of area and you really want great results, I always stress ProMix is the way to go. This has mycorrhiza in it, which is a beneficial fungi that attaches to plant roots, and that is very important. The next thing that I love about the ProMix is that it's high porosity. That's what the HP stands for. Trust me, all your ProMixes will be high porosity. High porosity basically means it's like a sponge. It's very sponge-like. And you'll notice that when it's, uh, when it's dry, it has a hard time absorbing water. But once it's damp, you'll find that it stays damp for a very long time, but doesn't get too wet. It holds on to the perfect amount of water, but allows it to drain through the soil as well as hold on to the water that's needed. So your plants are way less stressed and I really truly love this stuff. And I get this in a in a big old bale. This is a, uh, almost a 60 pound bale, I think. And um, it is, uh, as you can see, 3.8 cubic feet. And this is going to fill up this entire bed here. So this is a great, uh, this is a great purchase. This was about, I think $48 for this bale and it's a, it is a big bale, as you can see. And you can make your own. I just choose to go with something pre-made because it's winter outside and I don't feel like, I don't feel like going to the store and, and getting a bunch of different stuff to mix together an ideal mix. Even though we do have videos on that, it's just, it's, it's kind of once and done. It's easy for me to do, especially with a busy schedule. So let's get into the seeds we're gonna be planting. All right, so I went around and I picked out the varieties that I wanted to grow. And I think you'll be really shocked with how much we're going to be able to grow in such a small space. Again, using the high intensity style of gardening, you're able to grow a ton more in a lot less space because you're using uh, a very fertile soil because a lot of plants will often compete for nutrients, compete for water, um, and compete for sunlight. But because our sun, our, basically our sun, being our lights, is stationary, it will really be competing for solely uh, nutrients and water. 
And if you have them in a very nutrient-rich soil, there's, a, there's not as much competition because there's enough to go around for everyone. And so I'm really excited about this and I think we're going to have a, a really cool garden this year. So now there is, and there also is a method to my madness for the varieties that I chose when it comes to uh, the space because I don't want them to comp compete for space because they still will do that. Um, so the Parisian carrot was the first one I chose. The Parisian carrot, focus there. The Parisian carrot is almost looks like a radish. It's really cool. It's uh, it's more of a, a spherical uh, carrot. So you don't need a whole lot of space. It's one we suggest a lot of people grow if they're uh, in containers or they have really hard compacted soil because you can grow a lot in a little space. Next one is Mizuna Red Streaks Mustard. The, the Mizuna Red Streaks Mustard is great because it's kind of just a frilly, uh, a frilly mustard. It, there's a lot of mustards that have huge leaves that take up a lot of space and that's not really what I was going for. I wanted something that I could kind of intergrow with the, um, some of the other stuff that I'm growing that's not going to compete for a lot of sun and space. So uh, we love mustard. It's great in salad mixes. The next one is dill. This is bouquet dill. I love bouquet dill because uh, you can harvest it really small. It's a fast growing, um, it's a fast growing variety of dill. So it's something that you know, other dills they get really tall, really spindly, and they don't have a whole lot of uh, the, the the dill ferns. Whereas that's primarily what we use in you know salads or cooking fish or potatoes or things like that. Um, we use a lot of dill. So, and, and it's just an incredible, I mean, making pickles, every, it's, it's just an incredible variety. So I really love the bouquet dill. Triple curled parsley. The triple curled, the triple curled parsley grows a lot more compact than uh, your dark green, uh, your dark green parsley or some of your more true Italian varieties of parsley. Um, the, the triple curled tastes exactly the same, only takes up less space. So you're kind of getting the theme here with kind of what we're going for is things that grow compact and take up less space. So we can get a lot more out of our space. And this is also something you can apply outdoors. For those watching that, that are looking at me like, you know, Luke, I'm gonna hate this series because I don't grow indoors or you're growing a lot more, you have a lot more space than I would have indoors. Folks, this is why I do this information. So you can, you can still take this information and apply it out, you know, outdoors. There's a lot of little nuggets you can still take from this series. So don't click away or, or unsubscribe for the season. You're going to learn a lot. I, I do promise. There's still a ton to learn because the only thing different is that we're inside versus outside. All the information is going to remain the same. So uh, the next one is really fun. That I'm so excited about is Tiny Tim Tomato. Tiny Tim Tomato is actually an heirloom dwarf tomato. So this is one of the only heirloom dwarf tomatoes that exist. It was uh, actually bred through a mutation where the plant only got to be about 12 to 18 uh, inches tall and it still fruited. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's throw it in there and let's see what happens. It's a ton of fun. We recommend this one for, again, people growing in containers or that don't have a lot of space that still want a cherry tomato or kids. Kids love tomatoes like this. So uh, it's a fun one that, uh, that we're able to, to grow. I, I Oh my gosh, I love it every single time I every time every single time I plant it because it's it's the cutest little plant ever. The next one is Scarlet, uh, the early Scarlet Globe or uh, radish. Sorry, ugh, I had a hard time getting that one out. So the early Scarlet Globe radish is um, I mean it's a radish, but one of the nice things about radishes is you can eat the greens and the bulb itself. So even if we don't get a bulb, we will still get radish tops, which we saute or throw into salads. And it's very versatile and it's a really delicious variety. The next one here is cilantro. I absolutely cannot get enough of cilantro. We use it in everything. Because we've been going plant-based, we don't consume a lot of uh, salt. Uh, salt is extremely bad for you. And everyone, well, I can't say everyone, but I'd say the a very, very large uh, portion of of the population is getting way too much salt in their diet. And one way we've been able to reduce a lot of salt in our diet is by supplementing with very flavorful and aromatic herbs. So things like parsley or dill, cilantro. When food is really flavorful, you don't need as much salt because salt is a flavor enhancer. So if it's already very flavorful, you don't need as much of it. And, uh, or if any, I, I don't ever salt my food. So I rely solely on herbs and I love it. So cilantro is great. We use it in everything. It's just a, it's an incredible herb. Um, and some people say it tastes soapy. The thing about that is that depending on your taste buds, genetically, you might taste cilantro as soapy. I don't taste it. So whenever someone says that, in fact, my grandma 
said she couldn't eat cilantro because it upset her stomach because it tasted too soapy. For me, I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? This is an incredible herb, and we never could connect on the same level. So uh, by all means, you know, if you've never grown cilantro before, if it tastes soapy to you, don't think you're going crazy. The next one here are some lettuces. I really wanted to get, again, some lettuce greens in. They're just so important to have in our diet, and they're very nutrient-dense, uh, nutrient and they're varieties that you cannot get in the store. And uh, so you're going to get a, a much... You're going to get a much more well-rounded salad by growing some of these unique greens. Um, and so one of the first ones is Super Red Romaine. There you go, Super Red Romaine. Really nice dark red variety. Our favorite, our favorite lettuce variety of all time, the Tango Leaf Lettuce there. And I'm sorry, it's the lighting is not super great. We're downstairs in our office and there's, only, there's lighting everywhere, but not where I want it to be for the camera. So uh, the next thing is Red Vein Sorrel. The red vein sorrel is a great green. It is actually a, a, it's a very, very tender perennial. It's still considered an annual, but it is so, so nutrient dense. And it is one that really does not get enough love. So we're gonna grow this and really try to promote it to all of you because I think it's a green that if more people started eating, they'd realize why I love it and why so many other people that have tried it love it because there's nothing bad about it. Um, it just gets more bitter if you let it get really large because it has a lot of um, uh, oxalic acid. So if you are someone who is very prone to like kidney stones or uh, things like that, um, getting it larger is not as great for you or, and it doesn't also, does not also taste as great. So it gets a bad rep, but I'll tell you what, it is a great, great salad green when it's young. It is sweet and it's uh, free of a lot of those oxalic acids that again, get, give it a bad rep. Now there's two more salad greens here. The next one is a classic black seeded Simpson. Black seeded Simpson just is, I mean, it, you gotta grow it pretty much. So the next one is Lola Rosa lettuce. Love that one, it's a deep purple lettuce. And then the next uh, four here are really fun, really excited about these ones as well. Uh, Tokyo, long bunching onions. We wanna grow an onion, but obviously growing onions indoors is impossible because they have a, they're photosensitive to how they bulb and they take about 110 days to mature. These take about 50 to 60. So we're actually gonna be getting a harvest indoors in the amount of time that we have. And they also don't take up a whole lot of space because they're very small little plants. So again, another reason why I grew them. The next one is a ton of fun. We grew this uh, earlier this year in the garden in the springtime and that is Tom Thumb Pea. So this is a truly heirloom true dwarf that will only grow to be about 12 to 14 inches tall and it fruits. Way cool, right? So that's that's an awesome one. The next one is a classic, we have to grow this. It's just amazing when it's fresh and that is uh, the Italian large leaf basil. It's a, it's a favorite around here. And again, one of those very aromatic, flavorful herbs that can help us to uh, season our dishes without that salt. And then the final one is gonna be very interesting to see how this one plays out. We have tried this indoors hydroponically before but it's one that uh, we were able to get success, just not an incredible amount of it. And, uh, and partially just because they just didn't do that well in the hydroponic setup. But because we're growing with soil, I think they're gonna do really well. And that is the Space Master Cucumber. Now the Space Master Cucumber is again, it is a true dwarf variety that, um, that will only grow to be about 14 to 18 inches long, the vine, it will fruit. It's incredible for, for containers. So we recommend a lot of these varieties uh, for people in containers because when you're short on space, as you can see in 16 square feet, we're going to be able to grow all of these, all of these varieties. And I know that that might seem daunting, but when you only grow a few of each, you're not taking up that much space anyways, and since they're varieties that don't take up that much space, you're really able to multiply your output. And I do hope that you all are going to love this. So I'm gonna get uh, the soil put into the bed, and I'll get back with you when that's done and we're ready to plant. So I realized we actually ran out of time, which is fine because I still gotta do a bunch more stuff, and I wanna bring you all along for it. So we'll just make this uh, part of the second episode of the Indoor Gardening Series. Uh, stay tuned, click the subscribe button if you've not already, and I'm sorry, I'd love to bring you all along for the, the, re the remainder of this, but we'll have to plant and fill the bed in episode two. So it'll be exciting and something to look forward to. All right, catch you all later on the next episode. This is Luke from the Am I Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home and we'll catch you all later. See ya, bye.